They said to him, What must we do if we are to do the works that God wants? Jesus gave them this answer. This is working for God. You must believe in the one he has sent. Ya mere haji joya se kidwi hanyi geme ko weburu na anyi na aro oru nke chineke. Jesu azaha se nke aboru nke chineke kuno kwenye nunyaho nkozitere otito derejeso this is an unusual answer gonna buy jimmy mobro nine naroko webro nine naroro nke chuku what should we do do so that we'll be doing the works of God. We find that question in various parts of the Synoptic Gospels. Sometime the Gospel tells us a young man. At other times, one of the lawyers somebody who wants to put him to the test and a jujesu kidi hai ge me ko webro na ina aroru nke chuku the question is set in the background of you know in the synoptics of eternal life what must we do to have eternal life Keep asking that question. Every time you face yourself with a situation that you're asking, how do I react? What must I do? What would be the right action here? No worry, Nick, no you virtue. Virtue. Virtual habits, that is, Nihia Mara Madueshi. If you keep doing the right thing regularly, it becomes a habit. So that when you face a situation, you will not have to do all the calculations each time you react correctly. Or Margesh. The same thing. Wrong action, wrong responses to situations. Now, mesh, you get used to res wrong responses. It becomes vice. But in each situation, ask yourself, what will be the right? And even if you think you don't ask it, you are still asking and making a choice. What must we do? So that we'll be doing the works God wants. Works, plural. Now, as we today, no, but works, plural. Jesus gave a very strange answer. He told them, believe. Believe. How does that tell me what to do? And this is the point. We know that St. James in his letter would eventually tell us, James chapter 2, from verse 14 to verse 26 that faith without work, especially good works, 
is dead. O kukwene ngwere ze oru merigana ngurangu. James chapter 2 verse 17 and verse 26. One would have asked and expected Jesus to answer the way he answered at other times, or even to use this opportunity to present the points he taught in Matthew chapter 25 about the last judgment. What must we do so that we would be doing the works of God? We would have expected him to say, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, give drink to the thirsty, give shelter to the homeless, welcome strangers. These are the works on which we shall be judged according to that teaching. One, two, three, four. Osuze, I believe. Go back to the beginning of, chapter, of John chapter 6. Last Sunday we heard the story of how Jesus saw this crowd and fed them. Fed the crowd with five loaves, two fish. The first painting in the ceiling of our cathedral is the multiplication of the loaves, feeding of the 5,000. The feeding of the multitude. But as you walk up the aisles of the cathedral, you find out that they lead to something greater. As you move, they get greater to the transfiguration and finally to the 12 articles of our faith at the center of our church. Those are signs. Jesus worked that miracle. As I had the 5,000, excluding women and children. A man he had the dad there with 15,000. You pick a tempe. Because now, a child, a boy, provided the loaves. Ma gave the gear and the beer. Oh, to the Jesus. I'm going to do Juja, go no Gugunke, or the Cassensus in the Nigeria, Ghana got the correct. I jag in Nama, Maggie Kogumado. After feeding them, they got, he knew that they got wrong message. They wanted a king that would lead them in revolution against the Roman authority. That wasn't why he came. Go. Because he knew the apostles also wanted the earthly Messiah who would fight for their liberation. He sent them away. And he escaped and went to the hills at night to be with his father. And I remind all ministers of the gospel, God will regularly shock you and shock the people of God by the miracles he will walk through your prayers. And the people will want to praise you and unfortunately worship you. Ronu. They are coming to run. Jesus, Bah. Because that wasn't the message. Then the following, the people, the following day came around. The Bible said, at that point where he had fed them, hey, Atarambom. 
and they did not see any of the boats again. They saw the apostles go away with one boat. And Jesus did not go away with them. What came out? So they made their way quickly. Jetobrie. And when they found him, they asked him, Oga, when did you come here? Now, it is a beautiful thing that people were always looking for Jesus. But remember, it is not enough that you are looking for Jesus. What is more important is why are you looking for him? In Achoni Agana. Because the chief priests and the elders were also looking for him sometimes to kill him. Herod was looking for him to listen to him. A number of the lawyers were looking for him to embarrass him. These people were looking for him for chop. Oyad. Egad, umunam no bikun. Hega ebidorigan tau no diridin. Aba obia bagdembo. Then we are looking for him because he gave them food free. Jesus immediately changed the topic to show you that they did not even understand why he gave them food. They had not understood who he was. He told them, labor for the food that will last. Do not work for food that cannot last, but work for the food that endures to eternal life. The kind of food that a son of man is offering you. For on him the Father, God himself, has set his seal. And yeah, many of you know that you know, but I want to tell you this. That's not why I came. But no, we're in the house. So there's another food that you should be least working for, looking for. Because that one does not end. It does not decay. They did not understand. If they had understood who he was, the questions that followed would not have come. Just like what happened in the first reading, it is true that they quoted that aspect, but they also missed the point of the first reading. What happened in Exodus? What must we do? He has just told you now, labor for the food that will last, lead you to eternal life, the kind that I am offering you. And what is that food? I am the food. The person God, the Father himself, has set his seal on. This should be the center of your attraction, your hunger. Not these signs, these things you are collecting now. No matter how much of it you collect, you will want, for, you want more. The same way, You know that some of the things that our people do, they do out of hunger, frustration, and present biting need. They follow those who claim to be walking miracles. Or even those who, in whose presence God has walked miracles, they follow them from place to place. Ishimbe, Agarimbe. Ishimbe, Agarimbe. Sometimes the same set of people. 
One day, as a young priest, a man came to the office in the parish when we were in Opanda. He wanted an introductory letter. Letter. See, there is a letter. Kea uji me lele. Bem jumari o chijuku ne lele. O kore ni munsubu ye koda. He told me his story. A very pathetic story. And I asked him a question. Now, why with this story you have told me, why must you go to Elele? And he answered, because I believe there God will hear my prayer and answer my prayer. I asked him a very difficult question. Okay. Suppose Niru Elele kwe me kwerea me chukwa zagia gichere. Supposing you go there and pray, and the prayer is not answered the way you expect, what will you then do? He kept quiet for a very long time. An old man who had suffered. Go by Maran Kichosim. Mbome Maran Obeguche Chuku. I didn't stop. Then I will know it is not the will of God to hear my prayer. I didn't stop. Then if you know it is not the will of God to hear your prayer, what will you do? The answer I was waiting for came at the end. He said, well, I wait upon him to do with me what he wills. What he told the Jesus. That time he had acknowledged after looking for the signs and I don't get them, I will get back to him in faith. And let his will, not mine, be done. Even Jesus, the only son of God, who is God, prayed to the Father to solve his immediate problem of cross. See, he has so ask him a yole, my master will get jelly, be feeling in a chuku jazz. I didn't, I'm not saying you shouldn't go, but what is your disposition? Whom really are you looking for there? Is it the will of God or that man or woman whom you believe is man of God or will of God who eventually becomes your God? with small g. Whom are you looking for? And why? This is working for God. Believe in the person he has sent. Otito Dirigesu. This belief is not an empty belief. If you really believe in Jesus Christ, you will believe like Peter, that is the Christ of God, the Messiah of God. Then you will be bound to believe that what he revealed about God about the world, about human beings, is true. He would then tell them later in this gospel, if you don't believe because of what I do, the signs, uh, the teachings, if you don't believe the teachings, believe at least because of the signs. Let these signs lead you to accept the fundamental truth. And that belief determines every other thing you do. Ihanekiebo, fundamental option. The fundamental choice. That is immorality. But obrone faith, no the grounding belief. Basic faith. Kedu the basic faith that determines your action. That is the question. Because it is what you believe that determines how you act. Faith directs action. I will give a few examples. If you really believe 
that when you die, you will be judged by what you do today and not by what those whom you left behind will do. You will be careful about your actions today. Obruni Iquiri Nengwoko Ni aje jikpe gikpe bi yime terkita Ni aje goshi mbijlako Bi yime terkita Ine mom me uche gijadea But if you believe That when you die Where you will go Depends on what those you left behind will do That will also guide your actions Obruni Iquiri Nengwoko you behave accordingly. All the guys as simple as we think. Oh. Do you really believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, who says that if you are baptized, you have become with Him one vine? He has become with him one vine. She has become with him one vine. All of us have become branches in the same vine. Do you really believe that? Do we believe that? Do we really believe in Jesus Christ? And that he was sent by God? And that what he taught us is true? And that God is love? And that you are being redeemed from your sins? And that your difficulties now are not caused by your ancestral cause. Do you really believe that? That is the problem. If you believe rightly, you will act rightly. But if you don't believe rightly, you will continue to think that religion, Christianity, is transaction. Transactionable. Unsuicide. Unwere 1,000 naira. So seed in a more ten thousand can work more wash it. Hm? I'm a basher and I got just so Gabonians in here one thousand under ten. We is on my road. I shot the home. Whoever does that type of business, you sow seed with one million, then all your problems in life will be solved. So, all your problems in life, the world only one million naira. As an example. So what do you really believe? Are you acting based on faith? God told Moses in the first reading. They are complaining. But the problem is not even what is happening around them. Their problem is faith. But they don't believe you. And they don't believe me. That was why each time they doubted Moses, God punished them because it was act of disbelief in God. I remember that ruling on Mekaka in God. What told Jesus, and he told them, "I will test them. Tomorrow they will have food, and each person should gather just what he needs for that day." Only here we're telling you two days, one one day, to test their trust, their faith, their generosity. Una humani yong. Provide, provide, provide. Okay, he provide our one community one thousand bags of rice. Only na an average hundred. Only I was over fifty. One inch was over thirty. Olega hor. For the rest of the community. Provide, provide, provide. Okay, God provides enough human, material, spiritual and intellectual resources to go around to all of us. Do you really trust that he who provided for you today will provide for you tomorrow? Provided you do the right thing. Go out and gather. Go out and work. Do you really believe that? I will test them. This hunger 
that we have for gathering, for material things, for fame, for this, is natural. God placed it in us when he created us in his image. But the fact is, only God can satisfy that hunger. That is where he says, the food that I will give you, that is myself, that is the only thing that will satisfy our test. As St. Augustine says, you have made us for yourself, O Lord. And our hearts are restless until they rest in you. The more you get, the more you have. So if you, you want, if you don't ask this fundamental question, what am I really looking for? You will not know that nothing that is limited. Forever. No. It's not possible. So, the more you look for these things, the more open you should be to God to realize that only himself can satisfy you. And most crises in the life of human beings are rooted in religious crises. Ask people. If you believe in God, in Christ, in the resurrection, there is a way you look at death. But if you think that this world ends in the grave, there is also a way you look at death. This second one leads to a situation of hopelessness and despair. Because some people are little mad on our, but often don't yield the expected results. And well, I'm not one of those who say that money can't buy happiness. Because they will tell you, if you say money can't buy happiness, it means you don't know where to shop. But I can only tell you that the happiness that money buys can't last long or forever. Chick men don't do where you go. Hane magiri do you? He na hori a ho. O gabo nyamo taro inena geshi geshi. O taro wari wa onu. Ongr ha men we heni he kwajuru be he o. Oni gabo problem. O nyamo je we me check na mo be chirol na jazz tai tari balile. Ma o o yikote ge te makandoshi. That is the thing about this temporary happiness. You ask, the more you look for it, the more you realize that nothing that is created or made by man can satisfy it. It a uh, hunger for God and your hunger for real lasting happiness. So they are all pointers. And where are they pointing to? To the one upon whom God has set his seal. Believe in him. Right now, he helps us with his word, or with his body and blood. The reflection on chapter 6 will continue. We will keep reading chapter 6 of John's gospel for three more weeks. And various aspects of this deep theology. Chapter 6. One characteristic of John's gospel is that, is, is that it is where you find the longest collection, largest collection of the sayings of Jesus Christ. Chapter 6 is one of those long ones. His word is life, but his body and blood is life that leads us to eternal life. Believe rightly so that you act rightly 
Another example is if you believe that the same God who created you created the forest, created the evil spirits, created the seas, created the mountains, and that the same God has made human beings in charge of every other created thing, Psalm 8, then you will not be terrified by those things. But if you believe that those things are spirits that are more powerful than you and than your God, you will worship them in order that you will live. Believe rightly so that you act rightly. Believe in Jesus and what he represents, the message he brings and who he is. Believe in Jesus and who he is, what he teaches, what he reveals about God so that your action will follow from that belief. We want a revolution in this country. Some. Some want a revolution in this country. Remember what I tell you every time. The first revolution we need in this country is a spiritual revolution and a moral revolution. If we are not converted to God, we will only be replacing one type of problem with another type of problem. St. Paul tells us that it is a spiritual revolution that will make us abandon the useless way of life that the, ancestors, that the pagans live. And this spiritual revolution comes from a firm belief in him whom God the Father has sent, on whom he has set his seal. Believe rightly and act rightly.